How do you know the drill at start and your analysis of the works? I was super happy with all three. Um, Tappa Trice was the first to go, got into a really good rhythm, uh, basically just kind of 12 and 1 each uh, eight. Looked like he was getting over the ground really well. Strong gallop out. It was uh, well in hand throughout. I mean, it was uh, exactly what we were looking for, hoping for. Happy that we were able to get it in on a track that was in perfect condition this morning. And looked very good, cooled out well. So far, so good. What are you trying to accomplish in these works? And you're a week out. Is it just a tightener? How does that work? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a little bit of a tightener. It's a little bit of a maintenance type breeze. Um, it, all had good solid works last week. We wanted to do a little bit less today, but still do enough to get a little something out of it. And I think we were able to accomplish that with, with all four of them. You've been at this rodeo so many times. Um, it's being seven days out, how does the rest of it go? I mean, how much of it is nerves? How much of it is babysitting? How much of it is just hoping the horse doesn't go the wrong way? Yeah, all of the above. You know, you're just, at this point, you get these final works in. Seem like they've all come back well. We'll obviously be looking over them closely at all times. Uh, we'll do some gate schooling, some paddock schooling, some uh, maintenance gallops, and you know, you just keep your fingers crossed at, at all times. Specifically, if, oh, I'm sorry, Tom, I was just going to ask does, does it get easier to have multiples in a race like this as the years go on, or not necessarily? I don't, th I don't think easier would be the right word. I mean, we, you know, we have experience doing it, but. Uh, you know, when you come in with a group like we have, then uh, expectations are high, and along with that, you know, you're a little more tense about it and uh, anxious for the moment to get here, and just hope that you know, we know we have some really good colts, and uh, we just want everything to continue to go smoothly and, and uh, you know, give them their best chance, best opportunity. What goes into the decision to have a couple of them work together? Well, they all worked in company. It was just a matter of kind of uh, you know who would make good workmates, um, put Kings Barnes and Major Dude together because they made good workmates last time. They're both owned by Spinthrift, and so you know, it just kind of made sense to put them two, those two together. You've had favorites win the Derby. You've had a long shot win the Derby. You've had a lot of favorites, all the above, and 62 starts or whatever. Which is harder? Well, I think anytime you're the favorite, expectations are higher, and uh, you know you, uh, we feel like you know we're dealing with some really good colts here that have uh, live chances. So I think uh, you know that's that uh, makes you a little more anxious about it uh, when you come in with a long shot that uh, you know expectations are low. You probably feel a little more relaxed, but uh, it's always exciting to be here. And, and, uh, you know, what we want to do is our job execute our workouts properly and prepare the horses to the best we can and then it's kind of up to everything else from there but you know i thought we team did a good job today we got the breezes in the way we wanted to and so now we just uh hope they uh, continue to do as well as they currently are this isn't the first time you've come in with multiple winners of major prep races in the last round but how would you compare the depth of this derby group with some of your past uh, well, I mean, we, we've only run one favorite. I was always dreaming. Uh, and I think we have Forte or Tapa Trice, either one could possibly be a favorite or close to it. And, uh, so I think uh, you know, from, from that standpoint, uh, I, don't, I don't think we have brought, brought three Colts here with the credentials that these three have. With Forte, has he surprised you, like in the Florida Derby being like fifth top of the lane? He blows by him like you're standing still, literally. Yeah, no, where, where I was watching the Florida Derby, the box I was in, was a little more than a 16th of a mile before the finish line, or right out of 16th. And when he came by me, I, I did not think he could get up, and much less with my length and pricking his ears at the end. So, you know, you could, you could visually see him lower down and find another gear. Um, it's exciting that he was able to do that. It's his first time trying a mile and an eighth. And, uh, yeah, he's... Uh, He's amazed us with a lot of things that he does. And he seems like a horse where things just come easy to him, like even strenuous tests and everything. Has that something that's been a, a, a hallmark with him since you first started working with him? Yeah, Forte, he's just been a natural athlete from, from day one. Um, he turned everyone's heads in Ocala uh, early on. Uh, first time I saw him breeze in Ocala in March, 
we stood out at Ocala Stud that day and they came into us at Palm Beach Downs, I think on March 25th. And it just every, every time we did something with him, he was, he was impressive. So we, we had high expectations in, in his debut and, and you know, ever since then. Todd, have you ever had a horse that was more accomplished coming in the Kentucky Derby than Fort? I don't think so. Um, you know, to be champion juvenile and, and come out with you know, another great one win in the Florida Derby, and you know, credentials are about as strong as you can get. Todd, what is it like for you to put in all this work to get ready for the race and then it happens and you have no control <laughs> over it? Is that stress, enjoyable? I guess what is it like for you after all this time? Well, yeah. Once you once you kind of leg the riders up and you know off they go, and, and so it's uh, at that point you're hoping uh, things fall into place. You be able to get the trips you want, and we all know how that can go in a 20 horse field. So um, yeah, that's all we can do is, is is take care of everything that we have control over, and then the rest of it, uh, confident we'll have some of the best jockeys, and you know hopefully they're able to execute the game plan. Todd, do you think that uh, it's hard to imagine a horse being undefeated and kind of flying under the radar, but do you think that Kings Barnes is somewhat doing that given, you know, the strength of the whole squad that you have? Yeah, I think with Kings Barnes, he's only had three starts and, you know, the Louisiana Derby was obviously his coming out party, but, uh, you know, he just, he's, he's not one that's, been, that's kind of been on the, on the Triple Crown radar for a long time, so I think he's a little bit under the radar because of that. Is Jose confirmed to ride him? I'll, I'll confirm it with the Spinthrift guys, but I thought they got along really well this morning. Anything specific you're looking for out of draw day, hoping for at all? Well, we've had the one hole two years in a row, so <laughs> <laughs> I, I, won't, I, won't even, I won't even go there. Um, just, yeah, I mean, like everyone else, just hopefully draw somewhere in the middle. But, uh, again, that's one of the things we can't control, so we won't, we won't uh, worry about it as too and speak, much. 